Gary, Indiana, Colorado. Oh my God, this is crazy. Singapore, Helsinki, UK. You guys seeing this? Yeah, I'm looking at it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No Oxnard. <laughs> <laughs> For Berlin. Wow. Oh, that's because they're all up, huh? Yeah, it's it's more convenient. <laughs> it's, it's more convenient for the Europeans. Okay. No, no one from Hawaii. Let me just. I'm gonna start recording, and then I'll do our intro, and then we'll hand it over to you guys. All right. Okay. So, thank you for joining us this afternoon. Uh, Comic and Cartoon Art Week has been full of some really great online programming brought together by the Society of Illustrators, Publishers, and Creators. As we move towards the end of this week, we really want to thank everyone for participating. If you miss an event or would like to rewatch a presentation, an archive will be uploaded to our YouTube channel next week. This presentation is being brought to you in collaboration with Fantagraphics, and I'd like to thank Emily Silva for all of her help over the past couple of weeks. If you have any questions, um, you can feel free to put them in the chat. This event is also being streamed live on our YouTube channel. So if you want to ask a question there, we'll bring it over to the um, Zoom chat. I will now introduce our panel and we'll get started with the conversation. Uh, Gilbert Hernandez is the co-creator with his brothers Jaime and Mario of the long running award winning and critically acclaimed series Love and Rockets. He is best known for Palomar stories following a fictional Central American town and its residents. Hernandez has won numerous awards for his stories, including the Kirby Award, the Ink Pot Award, the Harvey Award, and the United States Artists Literature Fellowship. His newest book is the dual collection Hypno Twist slash Scarlet by Starlight. Jaime Hernandez is best known for his locust stories, which follow the exploits, romantic and platonic, of his original characters, Maggie and Hopi. Love and Rockets has evolved into, the, into one of the great bodies of American literary fiction, spanning four decades and countless high water marks in the medium's history. In 2017, Jaime was inducted into the Will Eisner Comic Book Hall of Fame, has won innumerable comic awards, and was the 2014 winner of the Los Angeles Times Book Prize. And Adrian Tomine began self-publishing his comic book series, Optic Nerve, when he was 16, and in 1994, he received an offer to publish from Drawn and Quarterly. His comics have been anthologized in publications such as McSweeney's, Best American Comics, and Best American Non-Required Reading and his graphic novel, Shortcomings, was a New York Times Notable Book of the Year. Since 1999, Tomine has been a regular contributor to The New Yorker, and his latest book is The Loneliest of the Long Distance Cartoonists. So thank you guys so much for being here. Uh, we look forward to this conversation. Thank, thank you. you. Thank, thank you. you. Hi, guys. Uh, thanks for doing this. Um, uh, we've got uh, people posting questions already. So we'll, I'll try and get to those as they come in. But um, uh, I thought maybe we'd skip all the, the COVID talk. I feel like every Zoom I do wastes about 15, 20 minutes talking about right. <laughs> the, usual, <laughs> the usual stuff. So uh, let's, uh, let's focus on comics. Um, also, before we start, I just wanna say to everyone um, that uh, I would not have the career I have if not for these two guys. Uh, there are artists that I like that I've been fans of, but these are two artists who I can honestly say changed my life. Um, they influenced my work. They taught me so many things without knowing they were doing it. Um, and uh, yeah, I just want to say thanks to you guys on the record because there's a lot of things good in my life that even outside of comics that I can trace back to discovering Love and Rockets when I was 11 or 12, which is insane because I now have an 11 year old. So the, the idea of her <laughs> <laughs> reading Love and Rockets is a little uh, unnerving, but, um, but well, that's yeah. why your comics are good. Mm, okay. <laughs> it's, it's, it's in, it's in the DNA. They would not, they would not exist without uh, those comics of yours. So thank, thank you. you. Um, my first question kind of relates to that, which is that I'm sure you don't remember, but I first met you guys when you were doing a signing at, Comics and Comics in Berkeley in 1992. Um, 
I had just moved there to start uh, going to college there. Um, and so meeting you guys was like my equivalent of meeting rock stars. Like I was completely nervous. I don't think I even really spoke to you guys. I just got some autographs. Um, but I was just wondering if you guys have ever fe felt starstruck around another cartoonist in your life. Um, sure. I'm, I'm just trying to think of what, what, uh, yeah, yeah, uh, once or twice. Um, yeah, um, who was it? When I met Bob Balling, who did Little Archie. Yeah. That, that was really big. And Where did that happen? Uh, San Diego. He went there one year. I don't, I don't know if he'd been there before. But, um, and, but the trouble was Gilbert had talked to him like a half hour before. So they kept talking about this fellow who came by and, and, <laughs> and praised him. And I was like, uh, 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 I like you too. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Well, for um, me, it, it was, uh, well, you know, seeing Jack Kirby, you yeah, know, and uh, uh, literally, I mean, Kirby, Will Eisner, um, Harvey Kurtzman, you know, uh, I met catch him at a book fair once. Is that right? So all the old fellows that nobody's ever heard of. Um, yeah. Uh, that that but seeing Kirby the first time it was more huh and we got to we didn't get to know him he was an acquaintance but I, I I couldn't talk to him even when I you know was at a party with him and this and that he would say you know try to break the ice hey how you kids doing and I'm just like blah, 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 blah. I just never I just, of course I completely regret it you know yeah. it's because you know, he's gone but yeah I guess Kirby was the first one to just knock me in. I couldn't even get uh my Donald Duck comic signed by Carl Bark so he made my wife do it. <laughs> Because the trick is to get a hot chick to get your book right. signed because they'll pay attention, you know. <laughs> right. This is like 1980, right, right? 1982, 83, when we first went to Comic-Con, you know. Yeah. And that's crazy. All those guys were there. You know, know, it's it's weird to think of. I know. I love seeing those old photos where, like, you know, people are just shaking Kirby's hand and they're in, like, a hotel lobby or something mm -hmm. like that. Right. Um, right. It's uh, People who go now, I think they have no idea how how humble and how accessible everything was back in the old days. There was no mm -hmm. Hall H or anything like that. Um, <laughs> uh, and then, so I already showed you this before we started, but I brought um, uh, a relic from, from the old days. This was the inside cover of the first issue of Love and Rockets that I ever bought. It was, um, what is it? Number 23 from 1987. Um, and I was saying that a lot of people now know your work from the paperback collections and some of this, stuff has been lost in the in the process of collecting everything and making it fancy but um so if you don't know it if you don't have this issue um on the inside cover both Jaime and Gilbert uh listed their top 15 favorite albums of all time this month anyway as they said and I was telling them that as much as the comic itself blew my mind and completely changed my idea of what comics could be and you know put me on the path that I've been on ever since this list also blew my mind because I was a 12 year old kid living in Sacramento who didn't really have friends who were into the same stuff as me. Like I didn't talk music or comics with anyone. Um, and so to look at this stuff from, from guys that I thought were like the coolest guys in the world was so eye opening to me because it confirmed things that I, that I liked, but I didn't know if it was okay to like, like, um, like Buddy Holly and the beach boys. Mm -hmm. And it uh, brought up, things that I didn't know about that, you know, I got to go research. Um, but anyway, it's, it's, it's still an amazing list. Um, and I just wondered if you guys remember it, if you guys would still stand by it, if you want to update it in any way. Uh, right. Well, for, for me, I, um, I still love all those records, but all lists can be, are, can change over time, yeah. if, if, but you still love the records that were on there, but then new ones come along and, mm -hmm. you know, uh, I'm not going to mention any right now because I'll get in trouble. I don't want to kill the uh, the uh, the panel right away. Oh, okay. So I'll let, I'll let Jaime discuss it first. And okay. Um, I remember when when Gilbert asked me, I was like, I don't have 15 favorites. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I remember going, oh, what do I put? Uh, uh, I like the four tops. I'll put yeah. the four tops. <laughs> right. You know, and I I remember uh, just like going. And then the the list changing before the thing was even printed. Right, right. You know, you know but um, I got I kind of got in trouble by by music snobs that I put so many greatest hits in there. I see. But it was kind of <laughs> like 
well, I like all this band's all their stuff, so I might as well put a Grey's Hits in there. You know, I didn't I didn't know the rules of of albums, you know, and and music and how you follow your uh, how you follow your favorite bands, how you follow how you know the greatest albums of all time, kind of thing. Right. So I thought Greatest Hits is a good thing. Well, you know? I think that that's what I like that it was that it was so honest that it wasn't contrived and. You know, if someone asked you to do it now for the internet, you'd probably really sweat it out and, you know, mm -hmm. plan it out. And this just felt very, very honest. And uh, and so even 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 now, uh, you, you're still listening to uh, Black Flag and and Sex Pistols and and sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. I still like all the I still like all those records, but you know, other ones have come. You know, sure. Uh, I'm not I'm not as on top of things as I used to be. Or yeah. maybe I never was. I mean, according to that list. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but um, you know, um, there's I, I would say about f five or six of those are still up up there. You know. Yeah. But, yeah. Um, yeah. Well, anyone curious about it, I don't. I won't bore you by reading the whole list. But it's uh, Love and Rockets twenty three, inside front cover. Um, um, we got uh, a lot. We lot of got a lot of crap for it too. To go, did you? Why, why don't you have Aztec camera on there? Why don't you have <laughs> what? I'm serious. A guy actually told me, he goes, oh, my list's better than yours. You know, uh, Aztec camera being, I'm not saying anything bad that there's so many bands, so many records, so many forgotten records that it's, uh, you know, you can't, you really can't make these lists. I just was sort of doing a, a Rolling Stone list of best records, which are all, all I hate Rolling Stone magazine. So yeah. I kind of did that. So I said, well, you can hate our list too then, you know, this right. will be ours. So screw you. Right. Boom. Did they? <laughs> oh yeah. Oh, they gave, they gave me hell. I think it was hell, but it was more like, uh, it's weird because uh, music fans are super fascist more than anything, more than movie fans, more than comic fans even. They're just like, because music, you know, connects when you're young, you know, that's, that's, that's what helps you get through being young, yeah. <laughs> you know, it's music, yeah. the music you love. So that's Absolutely. why it's so personal and why people argue and, you know, you can't like that music. Why do you like that music? You know, it's like, well, it's personal. You know? Yeah. Well, I was at that age and where I was, I was really limited to broadcast radio. And, mm -hmm. you know, so like back then there were like oldies yeah. uh, stations. Mm -hmm. And so that was what I listened to all the time. So when I saw Elvis Presley, Bo Diddley, Chuck Berry, I was like, oh, you know, it was, mm -hmm. uh, I, I thought it was like my little secret that I liked that stuff, at that, especially <laughs> at that age. We wanted um, to break, we wanted to break that wall too, that like you can like, Elvis you can like you know it's not just 80s bands that you know you, you, the first bands you heard were in the 80s and those are the great bands you know it's yeah. no it, it goes back to the mid 50s you know yeah a great rock and roll you know to me you know right yeah uh, yeah I mean I I feel like the the guys I knew at that time who were into punk had a very limited view of like it you know it could, the history of our music only began here and ends yeah, here and, yeah. Mm -hmm. Anything outside of that doesn't count. Um, oh, I see some Aztec camera fans are chiming in. <laughs> That's fine. That's fine. It's like I said, I, uh, it depends on the person, you know. Right. Um, I remember when that came out, I was wondering if you were also going to follow it up with like a movie list or something like that. And I don't, I don't think you ever did. We did uh, a comic one and this volume two. Uh huh. Um, but we ne no, we never did a movie one, did we? No, I think because uh, I stopped after the her, the hassle of the uh, <laughs> record list. I thought, ah, forget it. We'll do right. comics. Just, we'll just stick to comics now. Right. You know? <laughs> right. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, let's see. What else do I have here? Um, so, oh, that leads me to this one. That's good. Um, are there still, even though the, everything seems to be reprinted now, um, are there still some forgotten or underappreciated cartoonists that you think more people should know about? Uh, it should know about because sometimes they're just uh, people that we like and influenced us. And if they looked, in a, if somebody just looks at it cold and hasn't, you know, never read it before, they might not, it might not connect, yeah. you know, and that happens a lot. So we have our, our, our personal favorites. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, and, and another thing is um, I'm, I'm on Twitter a lot. I don't know why, but, um, <laughs> um, and a lot of unknown cartoonists talk really loud. So I don't know if these are underappreciated or, or if mm -hmm. they're well-known or if they've got a big fan base. Mm -hmm. You know, I can't tell which ones are the ones that are making That's them. true. It's hard yeah. to know what, what's unknown at this point, huh? Yeah, I guess, I guess the one mostly that, uh, and you could show people the art and it's never gonna, it's not gonna connect with too many people. But the guy that used to draw Archie, uh, yeah. um, 
uh, Harry Lucy. Yeah. Fantastic, fantastic cartoonist. And that we still draw from him. We still, yeah. you know, uh, uh, body language, all that stuff. You know, D- DiCarlo too as well. Because that had more going on than Marvel and DC. Okay, I- I've said this in the last thing I did. It's like, you'll get Marvel and DC and you'll have Mr. Fantastic talking like this. And the thing going, <laughs> the thing's saying something funny, but it's like, <laughs> whereas in an Archie comic, you'll have somebody going. Yeah. Yeah, yeah you'll have that expressiveness and uh, you didn't have that in the serious stuff because it's serious. It's superheroes. It's the boys club, you know? Yeah. So, uh, and, and, you know, even uh, you look at old little Lulu, you know, yeah. comics, you look at old Dennis, the Menace comics by uh, Owen Fitzgerald, another brilliant artist and it's expressiveness. It's showing people how they act. That was kind of left out of the, the great, even the best superhero stories, you know? Yeah. Or, uh, or, or it was too dynamic, you know, like some of the, yeah. the poses. Like, I feel like when I, still to this day when i see you drawing both you guys when you have characters just walking on the street i see harry lucy there you know um and it's it's not the way that they would have taught you in how to draw comics the marvel way or something like that but uh, Mm -hmm. but it works beautifully Um, here's the thing um i remember seeing how to draw comics the marvel way that was i was already beyond that so i didn't kind of I didn't need it yeah. like younger people. Yeah. And I remember them doing a, a page of like, this is the wrong way to do it. This is the right way to do it. Right. And I'd go, well, I do kind of agree with, you know, <laughs> with this, but this isn't how your comics look. Yeah. That's true. You know, yeah. When they're, when they're printed. So who, who are you teaching? How, how, the, you know? Yeah. Some, yeah. I, I, that, you know, it, I don't. I don't know that I carry anything with me, uh, with me to this day. But that book was well read uh, in my in my in my house when when I was a kid. But I remember thinking that some of the artwork that uh, I guess it's Busima who did for mm-hmm. for that book, I liked it better than 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 the printed stuff, like the actual yeah, the actual yeah. comics. Oh, yeah. so, because he was just loose. He was just showing yeah. you what he can do, and yeah. uh, he, he shined. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Um, let's see. Um, oh, but I was going to say that. I know what you mean about some of the old stuff you like, it might not connect, but I feel like in some cases it really does. I feel like seeing all these Jesse Marsh reprints goes directly mm-hmm. back to you guys talking about him in the comics mm-hmm. journal. I mean, I don't, it, that, that's how I learned about him. And, um, and it's funny because they, uh, when Dark Horse was reprinting the book, those books, yeah. uh, it, I, I thought it was great, but you know, uh, you know, after a while they're, they're pretty repetitious. I know <laughs> the stories are all the same, but yeah. if you just focus on one story or whatever, um, it's a great storytelling. You yeah. know, panel to panel storytelling. But there was the other half of people seeing it for the first time going, this is the worst shit I've ever seen. Really? Oh, yeah. I've, I heard, you know, private conversations. Oh, really? Like, this is the worst. Don't learn from this shit. I go, okay, <laughs> don't learn storytelling then. That's right. up your alley. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> there's Yeah. There's a lot of those artists who I, I collect and, and study, but I don't necessarily carefully read every every word in it you know same with someone like alex toth who i, I love looking at oh, yeah of work course and toth. i don't and see there's it. there's the other side toth, toth never really had much expression of, with his characters except a grin or a smile yeah but he's such a wonderful storyteller and artist i could i have the zorro collections they're awesome i know i know and from a from dell True. comics you know yeah so they're great you know? yeah um let's see um anything coming up uh I don't know if you if you saw it, Jaime, but we got a question from Doyle Blackburn a little while ago. He exists. <laughs> he exists. Um, but yeah, if you guys have like a, a succinct question that you want to put in to me to to read out to to Jaime and Gilbert, do that. Um, but in the meantime, um, okay, let's talk a little bit about some of your side projects. I think everyone knows about Love and Rockets as I don't know. Do you think about that as like your main outlet? Like that's the main focus of your comics work is Love and Rockets. And then everything else is sort of a side project, or is it all is it all equal? Yeah, Love and Rockets is is kind of a, a steady keeps yeah. me uh, keeps me going. I mean, it doesn't come out, you know, as often as I'd like it to, but but um, it's still my main focus and my main. Uh, it's still the train keep going. Yeah, keeps going, you know. Yeah, and then something else, so, and then something else will come along on the side. But Love and Rockets right. is, my, is my goal to finish. You know? Right. That's what's always hanging over your head, right? Like, you yeah. got to get the next issue done. The same um, here. I mean, I yeah. see Love and Rockets as, okay, this is Love and Rockets. We've got to do this. We got, but I have to focus more on 
make, I don't want to say clean, but making it for an audience. Uh, basically, the fantasy reader is, oh, uh, I've never, I've heard of this. What's this about? Mm-hmm. And a lot of times they, go, they get to Hyman's stuff and they go, okay. And they look at mine, they go, what the f- F is this? What's this doing in here? Uh, so I started to, you know, try to move some of that stuff out because we're living in a woke world, you know, yeah. and you can't get down and dirty with Love and Rockets anymore. If you want people to like it and look at it, we mm-hmm. I, we want Love and people to like and look at Love and Rockets. You know, mm-hmm. the other stuff that's that's my niche stuff. That's like, if you're crazy enough to like that stuff, cool, you know. Mm-hmm. But Love and Rockets, I focus on really connecting with people, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, so, so let's talk briefly about some of these side projects, Gilbert, you have, um, you've been doing Psychodrama Illustrated, um, mm-hmm. which is a ongoing comic and Hypno Twist, which is a standalone graphic novel. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, can you talk about like why those, why that material, like you said, didn't fit necessarily in Love and Rockets or why you wanted to separate it? Um, f- uh, well, Hypno Twist and uh, uh, Scarlet by Starlight actually appeared in Love and Rockets in the, in the volume three in the, the annual, the thick okay, one. Right. They, they did, but I added some pages to it because it was pretty short stories. Uh, those are, okay, I, I'll try to make it quick. Those are based on my character Fritz as an actress and she makes movies and I just felt like uh, making movies of her um, originally it was, there were supposed to be short stories in Love and Rockets, but I got too ambitious to like, the stories kept getting longer and longer. So I, I started pulling them out and then I started, uh, anyway, so, uh, and then, so Psychodrama, Psychodrama Illustrated is basically the Fritz comic book, right. you know, she's in every issue, but she's always in a costume. So you don't always see her, you know, right. in, in her outrageous figure, which turns people off in Love and Rockets, but maybe they'll accept it in, you know, uh, well, I, I thought it was also because um, you're much faster than me. So uh, <laughs> Love and Rockets is like, well, that'll be done soon, but I got more, I got more stuff. So give right, me, right. I need yeah. different titles. And yeah, that's... yeah. I mean, so basically Psychodrama Illustrated and Fitna Twist, they're all Fritz books. Basically, I, I, Fritz is the only character that I'm, uh, I'm going to continue doing uh, outside of Love and Rockets. Love and Rockets, I'm going to try to bring normal people in because <laughs> because there is a slight distance if she's a she's an actress, right. you know. I mean, she and we're not we we don't really relate to their world, their life, you know, right. just to a certain degree, you know. Uh, so that's why I don't want to emphasize that too much in Love and Rockets anymore. Uh, so I see. I'm trying to do other characters, but in Psychodrama Illustrated and <clears throat> Blubber, Blubber, uh, yeah, it goes wherever I want it to go. You know? Right. Well as Jaime mentioned that you do seem to be a lot more prolific. Are you, I'm just as a cartoonist myself, I'm wondering, are you forcing yourself to like, really, are you like on a schedule or are you just, is it just compulsive? Like you just, these pages just flow out and you just have to get the work out and, and it just is easy for you. It's, it's both. It's not easy. It's work. It's all mm-hmm. work. Uh, mm-hmm. But I, I can handle it, I guess, but I'm not drawing really uh, elaborately anymore. I'm not drawing great, vistas and buildings and, you know all this stuff you know all the stuff that takes a while to draw i'm yeah. not really doing that i'm, I'm, I'm drawing the characters and, and they, they're in a background or whatever yeah. uh so they're it's not hard but it is work it, yeah. it, it takes up all my time i just can't i don't i just can't be uh i have to have something to do yeah i'm just that that's where i am now i go i i can't loaf mm-hmm. and you know i used to be the master loafer i oh my <laughs> god did i loaf <laughs> Uh, and now I guess just because of my age or whatever, I just like, well, I'm going to use my day. I got to use yeah. it. And and so what, what works for me is I'll be drawing Love and Rockets and I'll get stuck or tired. You know, it's like, I don't want to do this today or tomorrow. And so I'll start to do a different comic and it, and it does re-energize. You know, I just, oh, I okay, now I'm doing this. But then that gets burnt, born, burned out and then I go to third. So I'm always doing three comics wow. at once, but they don't, it seems like there's a lot coming out, but it, they take a well, long time to do. Well, they, yeah. They take a I, long time to do. I, in my mind, I always think I'm a loafer too. Like I, I like the idea and I, and, and sometimes I'll finish a book and I'll say, I'm going to take this whole week off and do nothing. Mm-hmm. And usually by like, maybe the first day I'll watch a bunch of movies or something or read, mm-hmm. but by the second day, I start to feel horrible. I start to feel like, uh, what am I doing? You know, what, <laughs> why do I, why do I exist? Um, <laughs> yep. And I, and so sometimes I just invent projects that aren't even for publication, but I just, mm-hmm. I'll, I'll start doing stuff just to, to feel like I'm being productive in some way. Yes. Um, Jaime, what about you? You've got a, a side project coming out soon, uh, Queen of the Ring. I don't know. Yeah. Is, it out, is it out yet? No. What's that? It's not out in stores yet, right? No, no, no. But, uh, uh, August, I think. Okay, it's beautiful. I got a. I, I've I've seen it, and it's uh, it's incredible. Oh, yeah. yeah. 
Um, it, it's a, it was it was a weird weird project that my girlfriend uh, talked me into actually printing mm -hmm. and because it was um, as long as we've been way before we were doing love and rockets I've always drawn outside of comics yeah. you know and I drew uh, these lady wrestlers in my secret time you know and and I would keep these drawings that I did, but they were never meant to be seen because they were my own secret thing. Gilbert never ever saw them. Mm -hmm. no. Or unless when we were younger, he would sneak into my drawer. And <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, um, and I've been doing them since when I was 13 years old. I didn't keep them all, but, oh, um, yeah. but I, I just, uh, yeah, I would I'd just do these drawings for myself. No editor. I thought yeah. that was kind of. I look. I kind of like that part where this doesn't have to be that good because it. I don't have anybody watching me, and yeah. nobody's gonna see this. Yeah. And it wasn't until recently where uh, I said, "Okay, you know, I'll do that." Um, yeah, it's a, it's a book of of these drawings that I did and kept to myself. A lot of them have been redrawn like twenty times you know, just because it's just the way I worked and I wasn't thinking about an audience and stuff like that. And, uh, um, but, but a lot of them did show up like in Wone Alley mm -hmm. and stuff like that. Um, are they, um, photo just, ref how photo referenced are they? Uh, are you looking uh, at magazines? Very few. Very few. Very few. Really, yeah. you're, just, you're just inventing it right out of your head. Yeah. And, Unbelievable. and I mean, just by reading wrestling magazines i kind of set them up like photos you know yeah like kind of thing but um yeah and uh so a lot of my training came from those yeah you know, a lot of like i learned how to do uh, action poses and yeah. and uh even uh, you know um you know, and I and I realized, oh, that taught me how to draw sex poses too. <laughs> 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 you know, and uh, um, so so yeah, yeah, it's a, this book um, that I was scared to death of doing at first, but now it's like, yeah, here it is. You know, I think it's great. See what you think? Yeah. I, I, yeah, I think it's great, and I I. I, I, I honestly think that there's never been anyone in comics who can draw the figure in motion, still, whatever, just, just anatomy, the body. I, I don't think anyone can touch you. And I think that this book is just a, a further testament. If, if, you, if you see it in, in the comics, that's one thing, but to look at just these, these drawings standalone, it really is eye-opening. Jaime and Rory Hayes, that's, right. that's where the connection is. Okay. True. Let's be fair. <laughs> Let's I love fair. Rory Hayes, by the way. For yeah. the record, I love Rory Hayes comics. Yeah. Yes. Um, great. <laughs> great anatomy drawer. Um, I mean, I'm seeing a lot of people popping up asking about your children's book that you did. They just want to hear you talk about how that came al along oh, or something. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Francoise Mouly uh, approached me for her line of, of uh, the, the, what's it called? Kid Raw? No, wait. Oops. Um, Little oh, tune, 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 tune books. Oh, right. Yeah. Um, anyway, she, uh, she uh, approached me uh, to do something and uh, she actually gave me uh, 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 folk tales to work with and to pick and choose and stuff. And um, I thought, yeah, this will be fun, fun job. Um, and um it was as simple as that. And yeah. she, and she, and we worked together on a lot on choosing which ones. Uh, and if you know, Francoise, uh, she's very persuasive. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So I get, I owe most of this book to her. Actually, because <laughs> well, I think I it was it. a smart way to do it because maybe if uh, you had just an open invitation to just come up with a, a children's book, whole cloth, Maybe you wouldn't get around to it. I, that's that's sure. sort of that's, that's sort of how I felt. It's like, sure. yeah. Um, yeah, she yeah, gave yeah, you, yeah, she gave I, you an assignment. I pro I probably wouldn't have. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. But that that was basically it. And uh, I had a fun time. But um, after I was done, it was I I I don't 
usually work that way, but mm -hmm. I was just like, okay, I did this. I don't want to do anymore. You know? But the response was good, right? It seems oh, yeah. like it, it yeah. people were like that. And, and, they, and you did it uh, in two, two editions. Is that right? Is, isn't there a, a English no, and no, Spanish? No. Oh, there's a Spanish one. And, and, and they, they, the smart thing was they, uh, they released them simultaneously. Yeah. Instead of waiting for, for sales and then do a Spanish right. version. Right. at the same time and i get fans from both sides you know um and you know people send me uh photos of their kids reading it or or copying from it and stuff and right it's really cool yeah really um, cool. of course i feel guilty for not doing a second <laughs> <laughs> but but uh no that, that was kind of fun yeah okay i'm gonna start taking some of these questions here this is oops where to go let me get it before it disappears. This one says, uh, where's this coming from? I don't know where it's coming from, but it says, um, as siblings, after all these years, are you still excited or surprised when you see new work from your brother? I guess he can't, can't say no, right? <laughs> I'm, a, I'm always excited because the, the way we work now is um, so separate that I don't see Gilbert's work till it's almost printed. Right. You know, uh, we, we, we used to discuss what we were doing more often, but um, now it's kind of like, okay, I finished the issue. <laughs> okay, all right, I'll see it when uh, we get the PDFs. <laughs> you must coordinate page count, right? You must say, yeah, I need we do that. Many. Yes. Mm -hmm. Once it's done though, well, you know, I'll have a certain amount of pages and I'll write to Jaime or he'll write to me and say, I have this many pages. How do you want to order, put them in order? And we'll just discuss it briefly. And then, you know, because... Uh, Okay. Um, uh, a lot of people are saying they're 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 demanding a Gilbert artist edition. I keep seeing that popping up. Gilbert, who? There must be a good. <laughs> there must be a good artist named Gilbert out there. Because uh, I'm not. No, I'm more of a storyteller. That's why I've never really went for an art book. Because you can separate Jaime's art, his stories, and writing from his art. You can do that because Jaime is unique, and he's one of the few cartoonists ever to be able to balance that equally. Right. So you could do that with mine. It's more, I'm more about the storytelling. And if you want to see wild art for me, it's nothing like what I do in Palomar or Love and Rockets. It's all just crazy blubber type stuff. Yeah. So I don't know, maybe someday, but I don't, it, it wouldn't be that interesting to me, but, yeah. it, but if somebody, you know, dropped a bag of money in my head, of course, I'm going to think about yeah. it. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I don't think you need to, uh, you know, think about it in relation to just standalone art, because mm -hmm. uh, to, to me, it's instructive to see any cartoonist work in, in its original form, um, mm -hmm. even if you're divorcing it from the storytelling at that point, just to see, oh, they, they went in there with a marker and scribbled around the, the, <laughs> the head or oh, something yeah. like that. Yeah. <laughs> I love I love seeing stuff like that. Um, oh, someone says, when is the Blubber Studio edition coming out? <laughs> that, uh... <laughs> That'd be a good one. <laughs> well, uh, just to, in case people don't know what Blubber is, this is my underground comic. There's five issues out there, and there's going to be a collection in the summer. Oh, great. But, uh, so I, okay, a lot of times I create a new comic because I don't have a place to put these stories in. There was a story in the first Blubber that I, it was a Fritz cartoon story that wouldn't fit anywhere. It didn't fit in Love Rockus because I want I wanted to tell the story. I want to move forward. So having this, uh, you know, 10-page story in it, that you're sucking up a lot of space, right? 16 pages for each of us isn't that much yeah you know as far as uh, telling a, a a long story you know you got to break it up into chapters so i thought i don't want to waste 10 pages on this so i just i'll just make up a book and i go but what's going to be around it i don't want to do another uh, true love or a uh, new love or or you know that kind of thing and i go because it's i've done that before i have the collections and i'm like it's okay so i just decide and then i happen i happen to uh, just look at my shelves and i pulled out a, 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 a s clay wilson uh, collection that uh, Fan Graphics put out, and I was laughing so hard, I had to hold my hernia in. It was laughing so hard that uh, that um, I thought, well, "There's no comics like this anymore. It's not like that. It's it's just not an, a nutty uh, frontier like it was, you know, yeah, uh, in the yeah. '80s and '90s. It's just different. I mean, that's the way it is. But yeah. I thought, well, I, it can't hurt, you know, to do this kind of comic. I mean, there's a couple of people like you know Johnny Ryan and Josh Simmons and you know. Uh, Ben Mara, you know, just doing crazy comics, but it's not the norm, you know? Yeah. So I just, I thought I'd just add my two cents because I'm, I've got a twisted imagination and I like drawing really crazy, rude stuff. I thought, Undergrounds used to do that. So I'll do yeah. it too. That's all. Uh, so Blubber is just a goof, a goof. And so anyway, I created that. 
briefly, Psychodrama Illustrated was created because I didn't have a place for uh, um, a graphic novel I was going to do about the wall, right? I started it and it just was, it was just, it just fell apart, uh, whatever, you know, and I had these pages that go, I got to find a book to put this. I don't put this in the rockets. Uh, so I didn't know what to do with it. So I thought I'll create, oh, it'll be a Fritz movie. And then I'll, it'll be a, in Psychodrama Illustrated uh, three and three and four. Yeah, well, the, only, the, the only part, excuse me, the only part about it that I a little worry about is that it's a political issue without any sexual or sexual references in it, like my <laughs> comics usually are. So right. I'm hoping people don't, they don't read three and four. They go, oh, what a great, this is a serious comic from Gilbert. <laughs> uh, no, it's just a rejected graphic novel that I stuck in there. And now it's back to sleaze. The, uh, well, five, you know? no. it's, it's great that you've established this working relationship with fan graphics where you can kind of just do whatever you want. You can put out anything that you're working on and most, most invent it. Yeah, mostly. But I mean, to invent just a, a new standalone ongoing comic or have a one shot or anything like that. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I don't, do that. I don't know that everybody and every publisher has that, that luxury. So that's, that's, that's great. Um, let's see. Uh, this, this keeps, let's see. Um, someone wants to know, did you guys meet Owen Fitzgerald or Al Weissman? No, they already uh, passed, hadn't they? I think they had both passed, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, didn't even, oh, go ahead. I didn't even know Owen Fitzgerald's name until like yeah. the 90s. Yeah. How about, did you guys over, did you meet Jesse Marsh in any way? No, he'd passed. I mean, is that right? Passed. Okay. Yeah, he had passed already. Yeah. Um, okay. Let's see. Um, I'll wait for some more questions to show up, but. Um, I, I don't know how you guys feel about the idea of teaching comics and schools for comics and all that. I, I personally think a lot of making comics is just like this intuitive process, very hard to teach someone. <laughs> <laughs> um, but are there any really simple, concrete tips or tricks that you've accrued over the years of, of working that you could just say some, not, not, I, I feel like we get caught up in like the sort of philosophical thing about how to conceive of a graphic novel and everything like that. But if someone said, you know, use this kind of pen to, to fill in your black areas or use a brush or, you know, something like that. Th th those were the kind of tips that really helped me out when I was starting out. And I was wondering if there's anything like that that just springs to mind for you. Who, gee whiz. Um, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, um, golly. Uh, it's like you're saying it's so intuitive that yeah. that it's hard to, to translate yeah you know, especially because um most of the time i do my work um i didn't know i did it meaning i see it afterwards and go wow i did that oh yeah you know how do you teach that you know yeah uh, i guess the only thing i can think of is just trust your instincts and and draw what you want to draw yeah you'll be you'll be a happy cartoonist mm -hmm. You know, that's a, that's a rare thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, God, uh, I'm sure some things will come to me in two hours from now, but yeah, uh, right, uh, just, just do it to make you happy because that's, that's why you did this in the first place, you know? Well, it looks like I, I saw a picture somewhere with an interview and it looks like you're, you're, you're drawing on a, on a, a, a light box, one of those flat light boxes. Uh, is that, yeah. are you using that as your drawing board? Yeah, because um, I used to, you know, uh, take out the light box, put it on top of the drawing board. Oh, yeah. and then, uh, it was like six inches, six inches thick. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then I thought, well, they sell those ones that are big enough as a drawing board. So uh, I've been doing that since and it, I don't miss the old way. <laughs> no, I know. I yeah. know. Those, those, those were amazing. When, when that came out, I, I remember calling up some of my cartoonist friends and saying like, hey, they have these light boards now that are like three quarters of an inch thick. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, you know, if I want to trace something or, or something, uh, I just flick it on yeah. instead of go through the whole process of digging it out. Yeah. How about you, Gilbert? Any, any little concrete tips or tricks or anything like that? Uh, tools, well, anything like that? Well, you, okay. Tools, you're going to either use a croquil pen or a, a, a deadline pen, like a mm -hmm. reprintograph pen or a brush. Mm -hmm. So you gotta, you really have to experiment with which one works for you. It takes a little while longer to do a brush, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, uh, the, like I said, the reprintograph pen or technical pen will give you a deadline. So you have to work 
around that. Uh, Crocal pen is probably most ideal because you're actually touching the paper and pushing it, but then you'll go snap, pop, and then the whole page is sprayed with ink, you know? Yeah. So you just have to learn to, uh, you know, just figure what works for you, you know, what, what, you know, it, it, it takes a couple, right. Cause we're usually, we're talking about people who never drew, drew that drew comics before. I mean, I've been yeah. drawing comics since we were five. Right. So, uh, you know, I mean, there weren't, you know, you know, great comics, but they're a five-year-old's comic, then a six-year-old comic, then a seven-year-old comic. So it kept going until by the time we did Love and Rockets, we were already there. You know? Yeah. Not it looks it looks like nowadays you're using kind of a, a mixture of those tools. I see some some uh pens and, and brushes all mixed together. It's mostly uh the pens right now because I'm drawing really small. I'm mm. I draw really near, near right? the size of the page. Yeah, I draw really small now. Okay. Uh, when I draw, drew larger, I did brush. And, and I kind of miss brush, but I, I literally, I just couldn't do the detail anymore. No matter how thin the brush was, I just couldn't get the detail. So I, I switched over to pen, Yeah. back back to pen, because that's how I started. And I found that it has its own freedom. But at the same time, it just doesn't look as good as a good brush line, you know, like a cover who has great brush lines. Or whatever. You don't mind doing the lettering that small? That's, oh, I that's... hate lettering. Oh, yeah. my God. Speaking of this. Yeah. And this uh, yeah. lettering is my weakest point ever. It's always been, which I don't understand. If you look at Love and Rock is number five, volume one, my lettering is fine. <laughs> and then somehow 10 years ago, 10 years later, I'm like, oh, Quasimodo, you know, <laughs> you know, I don't get it. And since then it's been Quasimodo. So it takes me a long, that's, that's what takes me a long time to finish a comic. It's just uh, yeah. uh, lettering and fixing the lettering and whiting yeah. out. And I still white out. Dan Klaus laughed at me because uh, I still <laughs> use white out. Oh, I do too. Of course, isn't that what oh, we're yeah. supposed to do? Isn't that yeah. how it's done? I didn't know you. I just, it. I just smeared a half a cover with white out because <laughs> lazy to paste. Oh, yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, let's see here. Um, uh, okay, this is a good, easy to answer question for both of you. How many hours a day do you each write and draw? Well, I'll. Uh, I'll, I'm going to ruin this by saying uh, eight o'clock to five o'clock. I'll take the lunch mm -hmm. break, but that's it. I work from eight o'clock to five o'clock and then I'm done, completely mm -hmm. done for the day. Mm -hmm. Then I, uh, then I, you know, wind down, have dinner with the family and we watch a movie or hang out at an evening, no work, no comics, no nothing. Uh, unless there's, I'm on you know, YouTube or something then of course we watch that, but uh, <laughs> I'm, jo I'm joking. Okay. <laughs> no, but seriously, I've just learned a regiment to where it works for me best. And since I've been doing it so long, it works perfect. It's, you know, so I get uh, my daughter and I, uh, Natalia, we watch movies all the time. I wow. pick one, one night, she picks one uh, the night, uh, next night. And we've seen a few dogs. We watched a Woody Allen movie last night that she hated. Uh, but I, I can separate the evil from the art, right. you know, for the artist, I mean, you know, the evil, yeah. the evil artist to his work, you know, yeah. uh, like I can watch Rosemary's Baby forever, knowing well that Polanski was a creep, you know, right? yeah. Uh, yeah. but um, I can separate it while I'm watching it. And then I'm back to, you know, hating him. What sounds weird, you know? <laughs> <laughs> well, I think that's good to have that, that hard line of demarcation between work and your, your normal life, because that used to be a problem for me is that Oh, I'd yeah. sort of be done, but I'd still be thinking about it. And I'm mm. trying to eat dinner with my family, but I'm thinking I want to run back in there and fix something that's been bothering me. And you have the newspaper in front of you while you're <laughs> having, <laughs> yeah. having dinner. Yeah. No, what, well, I had to learn to do that because I was the same way, you know, I uh, worked till two, two, three in the morning. Yeah. You know, I just, and I just, it just hit me. So once we had, you know, our daughter, Natalia, it was like, I'm not spending time with the family. Yeah. I keep working, you know, I keep finding reasons to work all the time and it's spotty, you know, all day long, all night. Yeah. So I just stopped one night. I just said, that's it. No. Yeah. No. I work, uh, I worked eight to five, like December 3rd. <laughs> <That was it. laughs> you know, what's a normal day for you? Like, I mean, uh, avoiding work. Yeah. <laughs> you know, letting it, letting it swim in my head. But, I see. I maintain yeah. that that is work. That is work. That is yeah. work. I, I tell yeah. people that that's how, that's how I write my comics is by, taking my kids to the playground or something while thinking about a story that I'm trying to write or something like that. I think good, of that as part of the process. That good, because uh, then, then I work 13 hours a day. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, no, it's, it's, it's just, it's just hard to get to the drawing board, you know, yeah. for me harder every time. And yeah. then, but the, the worst part about it is that I know if I get to the drawing board, I will get work done. Mm -hmm. But convincing myself to sit down and do it, whew, that's hard. Yeah. yeah. Uh, well, this 
that's a perfect lead into another question that I wrote out in advance, which is uh, to both of you guys, um, maybe Jaime, you go first on this one. Uh, what would you do for work if you couldn't make comics? Porn. I do that. <laughs> I do wrestling drawings. Really, yeah, for the rest of my life. You've never, you've never had this. Maybe I'm, I'm weird like that. But sometimes I'll just hate making comics so much, and I'll see someone doing some other kind of normal job and think like, oh, you know, if I, if I had to choose, if, or if I, if I suddenly like broke my arm and I couldn't make comics, maybe mm -hmm. I'd go do that job or something like that. Right, right. You know, I, uh, I do every once in a while. I wonder, like, God, what's it like to work with a team? Yeah. You know, mm. and then two minutes later, I'm like, nah, <laughs> nah, I'll do it. Or I talk to my, my sister or, or a younger brother and they tell me about work and, you know, and what, what uh, fellow employees say, you know, and it's just like, oh man, I'm, I'm glad I, I work by myself. Uh, so, yeah. A comment just popped up that said, I have a sort of normal job. You do not want that. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I figured that out after a while. I, I used to think like maybe I should sell shoes. Maybe that'll do yeah. it. You know, yeah. like, well, I'll probably make more money. That's the problem. Ah, right. <laughs> right. Um, yes, so, I have, but but I have no uh, nothing against people who have normal jobs. I it's just I work better doing what I do. You know? Yeah, and, and and we're dreamers. We don't think about doing things properly in a store or you know in a factory or whatever, wherever it is people work office uh i dream i'll just daydream the whole time i wouldn't even be good at the job you know? yeah um okay we're getting a lot of good things here this is interesting um was it surreal to see a new generation of cartoonists emerge who were inspired influenced by your work what was it like to see that pivot in the industry and uh okay i won't i won't put you on the spot with the rest of it but um yeah do, do you remember that when you started you know, saying, hey, this guy is clearly looking at our work or, you know, he's sure. learning from us. Sure, it's, it's great a lot of times, but um, there's also a lot of times where you never hear it. Yeah. You know, you're, you're, in your, you're in your room drawing and uh, you don't know what the hell's going on out there, you know? And then uh, I remember in the 90s, I was feeling sorry for myself all like, like, wow, no one cares about our comic anymore. Oh God, you know, I'm going to keep doing it, but nobody cares. And then, and then all of a sudden people started popping up going, going, oh yeah, you've been doing great work and blah, 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 this and that. And, and all my friends are this and that. And so that's when I hear it, you know? Yeah. Um, that's probably a healthier but, way to, to work. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I did not. Do, do you remember, uh, the loneliness of the nineties of love and love. Yeah, we, we called it the roaring silence. Yeah, it was. Uh, but what what happened is what you're talking about is like we could see the influences, you know, in other people's art coming, you know, coming up at the time way back when, yeah. and uh, but nobody ever captured Hi Miss Maggie and Hopi stories or my no. Palomar story, so we didn't worry about it. We could. We, that's because that comes from our personality. That comes from yeah. who we are. Right. So that's why that. But what got started to get me. This was started in the nineties and. the 2000s is that there were people influenced by the influences yeah. of ours of so they didn't even know what love and rockets was and didn't even care yeah. and you know how young people are oh that's old no that's yeah. old you know that doesn't even matter you know and yeah. that's that's where i i i cut it off i cut it off right there because it does matter old shit is great yeah the beatles are still good people <laughs> <laughs> no matter what arguments you get now yeah uh yeah no i think i think that's important i think that's been um important to me uh i i, I feel like i'm definitely a, a descendant of you guys but that it's been important for me to make that that lineage clear and um you know or just other other influences it's it's amazing i don't know if you guys have ever done this but every once in a while i get asked to come talk to a, a college class so you're talking to like 18 19 year olds or something like that and they want to know what are some comics that influence you or what are some films that you like or books and i'll talk about things that I think are just so common knowledge. I, it's like, I'm embarrassed to bring this up, but yes, I like, you know, whatever. And I see them getting out their pens and paper. I'm like, how do you, how do you, how, how do you spell that? You know, um, so I think it is sort of, uh, you know, all the information is at our fingertips with the internet, but I think it's still important for humans to voice, 
you know, who their influences were and who they learned from and, and, and pass that on. Mm-hmm. Uh, um, cool, cool thing about all that is um, uh, that many people influenced by us, uh, most of them uh, found their own voice right away, which was the, which I think was the best part, you know, that, that yeah, they learned from us, but they kind of went on their own, became their own, like you, you know, you become your own thing. I'm still working on it, but <laughs> thank you. <laughs> it's impossible. That's the- you know, I, I don't know if, maybe you guys don't have this, but I feel like if you grow up like the way we did of sort of learning comics, just from reading comics, just looking at comics, that sometimes it's hard to really sort out what is, what is my own? What is my style? And what did I pick up from another artist? And what did I interpolate or, you know, whatever. So um, that's, that's something that just hangs over me all the time. I, like every, yeah, um, every line I put down, I'm like, did I just do that naturally? Or is that the way, you know, Jaime draws it? Or is that the way Dan yeah, draws yeah. it? Yeah, um, a lot of people that want, want to be a, another artist or whatever, um, or very influenced by another artist, a lot of them don't know that, that a lot of times it's the pen that makes you draw the way you draw because <laughs> you know, <laughs> right. I got these, I got these, uh, l- l- I wanna put these lines down and I go, oh, the pen's making it look like this. I didn't expect this. Yeah. I didn't know what I expected, but, mm-hmm. but, and so learning to ink, made me become another artist that I thought I was. Yeah. Know? And, and, and things like that. Um, so. Well, when I was learning to draw from looking at love and rockets, I would, I remember I would pencil out kind of copies from your work, like, and the pencil version would look pretty good. I'm like, this looks like one of Jaime or Gilbert's characters or something. And then I just get like a crappy um, ballpoint pen or something and try to ink it. And I'm like, what happened? <laughs> <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> it's turned <Yeah>. to shit. <laughs> Nothing worse than penciling at something you're really proud of and it's really nice. Yeah. You go, I like this. I like yeah. this. And not thinking like, maybe I should take a picture or scan it. Maybe. <laughs> right. No, no. You're just so into doing it. And you put that pen on there. You go, well, that sucks. Now yeah. it's a whole different drawing. It, yep. they'll never see how good or how much I liked this drawing. I can't go back to it. Yeah. Yeah. It's gone. Um, someone I saw, it, I, I missed it now, but a little while ago, someone asked if you guys still have uh, a local comic shop that you go to or that you uh, want to give a shout out to. Yeah. I, haven't, I, I haven't been to a comic shop in a year. So. Right. Um, I go every, I go every Thursday to, uh, uh, cause see, you don't go on new comics day cause it's too crowded. Too crowded. Yeah. <laughs> So you go the next day. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, I go to one in Pasadena still. And uh, every week? Every week, you know, I buy something once every two months. Okay. Right. <laughs> that was my next question. <laughs> but um, the thing that I like the most is I like talking to the guys that work there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And they're, they're really nice people and stuff. So it's more like I'm just going to visit friends more yeah. than anything. And then I go down each aisle looking at, you know, where they have the pink tag that says new comics or whatever. And, and I just go, oh my God, this stuff sucks. <laughs> so I keep coming back, you know, I just yep. doing it. It's, it's like something I need. It's that, that routine that I enjoy, even if um, I ain't going to buy nothing. Well, that was when I, when I still lived in California, that was a weekly routine with uh, mm-hmm. me and, Dan Klaus and Richard Sala, we'd go get a late breakfast and we'd go to the comic store and, you know, I can, I can almost imagine, never buy anything. I can imagine some of those reviews from you guys looking through. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, but yeah, it was, yeah, like you said, it was sort of a, a social thing as much as a, maybe, maybe more so than a consumer thing. Like I often wouldn't buy anything, but it'd be great to hang out with those guys. And, and like you said, you know, you get to know these employees and I've been a little surprised to see that when I find out like a, a retailer that I knew has passed away or something, if it really hurts. I mean, it's like, yeah. um, it's, it's like losing a friend. Um, yeah. My, uh, 
Okay, I'm the, I live in Las Vegas, so my two stores are Alternate Reality, which mm -hmm. is uh, pretty much what has the new stuff, you know, uh, indie comics and European stuff, and he, Ralph uh, emphasizes that. And then, but and then an old school type comic store called uh, Cosmic Comics, which right. has the old, you know, you well it used to have like the old hip, you know, like old hippie stores. Those were the best. I love the old hippie comic stores because you walked in and you go. This is a mess. It's great. <laughs> yeah. It's old comics, new comics, a graphic novel on the floor. And you go, yeah. this is awesome. Yeah. You know, so uh, I loved it. Um, I, I am addicted to having comics around me. I realize that my comfort zone, one of my main comfort zones, I need to have a Mr. District Attorney comic on the floor. <laughs> I need to have Tom tomorrow or Tommy tomorrow, or I'm sorry, going really back, you know, Justice League comics or something, uh, but all from the 60s or 70s. Uh, yeah. cause that's my, my youth, you know? Yeah. Uh, so yeah. And, and I need to have like an obscure Dell comic or an, I love Charlton comics, the worst comics in the world, but I love <laughs> them. No. Cause they're just so innocent. They're just yeah. so like, they, they don't, they don't have a clue how to be exciting, <laughs> you know? So I love the peacemaker, the peacemakers. Oh in the yeah. Blue side squad movie. I know what's going on here. I you know. know. Um, <laughs> Peacemaker, uh, some uh, blue, uh, Ditko's Blue Beetle. Blue Beetle, but, yeah. I, but I loved uh, a Bill Fraccio and uh, what's his name, uh, Tony Tallarico's Blue Beetle. Before that, I, right. I like hack weirdo, you know, Dan Klaus type superheroes. <laughs> like, yeah. How did this exist? But yeah. I love it. So yeah. I, that's my comfort zone. Really dumb, crude superhero comics and <laughs> horror comics, and you know, uh, you know, just uh, Charlton comics. Uh, Gold Key. I love yeah. the movie adaptations and things like that. I just oh have yeah, old. old, old the whole schmear. I've got a ton of those adaptations where I don't even really know the source material. Like, I don't know what they were adapting. Like, um, yeah, what movie is this? What yeah, <laughs> I don't care. <laughs> but then once in a while, you, you'll find like, say, okay, there's the Lennon sister story. They're right, local yeah. Group, uh, mom and pop local group in the 60s. Alex yep. Toth drew it. I know. It's a terrific comic. I know. You know, there, and there, there's comics like that. You know, I didn't know who like, the Lennon sisters were before mm -hmm. that. Same thing with, um, I, I bought this Alex Toth thing and I was like, Okay, I guess there was some TV show called Calamity Jane and Buffalo Bill that this yeah, was yeah. like a, a tie-in to, but I don't know what it is. <laughs> but it's a great comic, you know. Yeah. It's like wow, you know. Beautiful. Yeah. yeah. So I'm addicted to old comics. They got to smell like old comics and be torn at the corners, and you know. <laughs> uh, let's see what else. We're, we're running out of time, but let me see if I can find a few last ones. Um, uh, let's see some Charlton fans here. <laughs> uh, let's see all right anybody want to put in a last couple questions here before we run out of time a lot of people arguing about music here <laughs> uh oh and it was uh, happened see why i kind of avoid it <laughs> yeah yeah exactly uh a lot of people have been asking if there will ever be love and rockets toys i don't know why that keeps coming up but we, we tried merchandising to just to test the waters and it failed completely. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, it just wasn't worth uh, doing. G Gary was opposed to it because he, he knew it would fail and it did, you know. Yeah. And, he, and yeah. I'm, I'm the kind of person that, that, uh, that is waiting for someone to come to me. With yeah. The idea, but yeah. <laughs> nobody's coming. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We, we, we would have said yes to toys of figurines a long time ago, but nobody's ever approached this in a serious way right i know the feeling that. like you're, you're never going to pursue it but if someone came up to you and showed you a prototype that looked mm -hmm. cool and just said do you approve of us making this or something like that yeah yeah you... i would say sure yeah right adrian, adrian i got a question for you what uh, if someone did approach you for like toys and stuff would you go damn i should have kept with one character <laughs> <laughs> I'd be right. like, what, what's That's... the what would the toys be <laughs> yeah true <laughs> Yeah, I got. I, I'm I'm the least merchandisable cartoonist for sure. Um, okay, now they're really pouring in. I know we got just like a couple minutes here. Um, okay, are either of you guys still doing custom commissions? Not at the moment for me. I, I just I got burned out on it. I I'm just because it takes away from me uh, doing my comics. Because like I said, I do three comics at once. So yeah, I have if I have to stop and uh, for a few days to do something else. Right now, it's not working for me. So unfortunately, I, I'm not right now. No, yeah, I don't. I don't. Um, partly because I'd have to mail the thing. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Uh, does this mean anything to you? Dark side of the ring, fans or not? Is it a wrestling thing? Oh, oh, it's a doc documentary about um, about the the weird 
stuff that went on in the history of wrestling. Oh, okay. There's I've plenty seen, of stories I've about that. Yeah. Oh boy, how did I miss this? I mean, crazy stuff, you know. Yeah. Are, do you do either of you guys still follow wrestling now? Uh, I, that, I turn it on uh, once in a while. But, is there uh, still a, a whole thing like like WWF or something like that? Is it still with Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um the best the best thing to do if you're a wrestling fan and you want the obscure stuff is just go to YouTube and you'll see oh, stuff yeah. the wrestling matches in a parking lot, you know. Oh um, yeah. You know, that's the fun stuff for me, you know. Uh okay, let me find one last question to end with. All right, anybody want to put okay. All right, here's one. Do cartoons get you babes? Hell yes. <laughs> Hell yes, it does. I got to, man, I got to like, I got to put, put a bolt on my door, man. It's just like, oh, oh my God, Margot Robbie again. Get out of here. You know? <laughs> it's like, no, no. Uh, I met uh, my lovely wife uh, and she, before the comic, you know, and, uh, you know, I was like, whoa, whoa, okay. I met a hot chick. Wow. I better, uh, I don't take this seriously, you know. I was just saying how 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 fortunate we all are that you uh, have been together with a photographer, a prolific photographer for even before your career, so that we have these photos from oh right, that's right, from so long that are just unbelievable. Like um, it's just it's just great. To, so tell tell Carol that we're all grateful for mm -hmm. for her work over the years. This is the, the one the first time we went to Comic Con. That's where, where I met Tezuka. Mm -hmm. and she she wasn't taking pictures that time and that was the only time that's when it was <laughs> carl barks eisner everybody was there and i met tez oh, well i forced myself on tezuka wow i knew i wouldn't be able to get to him and uh unfortunately jaime didn't get to him because mario and i had already you know ruined it you know because they, <laughs> well, they scooted him away the funny thing was i didn't have something for him to sign because remember you couldn't find that stuff in those yeah days. yeah but, that's right but luckily this is an old comic con and god bless it I said, oh shit, Tezuka, Tezuka, he's gonna go. He's gonna leave. He's gonna leave. Literally turned around, looked at boxes and went, oh, here's the foreign stuff. Ah, Astro Boy. I swear to God, it was just like that. That's what you could do. Wow. Though. Just looked and I go, I might have looked at the boxes previously and just remembered because I remember turning and it was just a collection of Astro Boy. In Japanese, it's one of those thick books, you know, and and I just forced it on him and he was real polite and stuff, but his translator and his handlers were just like, all right, get the fuck out of here, you know? But, uh, and, and he kept bowing and I don't never know when to stop. Oh yeah. You know, I bowed back and he oh. keeps bowing. I go, do I stop at one time? Oh yeah. <laughs> real friendly. And then Mario uh, went over there and said a joke that he didn't appreciate. <laughs> so I, I don't remember it. That's what I understand. I oh, know I don't remember that at all, but he mentioned it once and I went, really? You did? No, oh, okay. He was just cracking a joke and I guess it didn't go over well. I don't know. Ah, uh, sorry, burned Mario. No, I think I said it, and I just attributed it to Mario. That's the truth. <laughs> All right, people are enjoying the Tezuka story. Um, I it looks like we're about out of time here. I'll just read this one last comment here that says, uh, "They're both so grounded, but do they know they're two of the greatest cartoonists alive?" Uh, and I agree, um, and I am grateful for all the work you guys have done, and I'm glad we got to talk. Can I say one last thing? It's, sure. I was going to say this earlier. This is, uh, this goes uh, to Akita Kurosawa. He was 75, 76 years old. And they asked him, you're a great filmmaker and filmmaker. And he, when he just kind of calmly said, he goes, yeah, I'll figure out this movie making yet. And that's yeah. how it is. We'll figure out making comics yet. You yeah. come to, you, till the last comic you draw, you're still trying to figure out how to make a good one. Serious. So. I feel the same way. Mm -hmm. um, all right. Thanks everybody for watching this, especially west coast people who had to get up early for this um mm -hmm. a lot of people are just saying thanks and letting you know how uh, how inspiring you are um you. does anybody want to pop back on here any moderator or anything before we sign up no i i think we're good to go i'm gonna end it for everyone so thank okay. you so much okay all right thanks